Hi and welcome back to the Managing People and Organization course. Uh, today the focus is on the ethics and the social responsibility of organizations where uh, we are going to analyze the uh, ways that the companies can improve or the organizations can improve their ethical and social responsibility behavior. Right, we'll move to the lesson and we'll first get to know about the ethics. So what do you mean by an ethic? Right, or let's say ethics basically. You know, morally we know uh, what is correct and what is wrong. Or let's say in some instances uh, uh, with your experience, you may have uh, experience of uh, so many different types of uh, uh, things like uh, uh, based on your uh, personal behavior, based on your, uh, let's say, uh, with your family influence and with your organization influence, you may have thought of some of the activities before you do based on the ethics that you're known to, right? So when it comes to the ethics, we can simply define the ethics as a code of moral principles and values that governs the behavior of the person or group with respect to the whatever it is, what is right or wrong, right? So merely we are just uh, focusing on some of the legal, uh, legal aspects, let's say the legislative rules and regulations which are governed in country, right? So what is the legal framework we call? So with all these things, uh, we are looking to some sort of scenarios. Now, as an example, let's say if a person has, uh, mm, let's suppose a simple scenario, right? Uh, if a person has uh, uh, stolen some of uh, foods from a food store, so that is basically when it comes to the legal principles and regulatory background, it is wrong, which means it can, in some instances, it will be considered as a crime because theft is a crime, right? But when it comes to the ethical principles, let's say, when it comes to the soft corners of our mindset, we can see that is, uh, even though the act is wrong, or let's say the behavior is wrong, and it is actually totally, it's, uh, you know, uh, it should be rejected, like the activity cannot be accepted anyway. But when it comes to uh, the behavioral, or let's say, the sympathetic grounds, right? We see that the person has stolen some of the foods from the food store because he felt hunger. In order to be satisfied uh, his hunger, he wanted to bring something from the shop but he didn't have or let's say uh, he, he, he couldn't make the money so because of that only he made that sort of a stolen like uh, he made that roadway to steal something and to consume. right? But let's say if you are the vendor of that particular shop. In some instances, with your ethical background or ethical behaviors, you will think of the think on that act for twice, and you will decide, okay, I won't take any legal actions against him because since it's a sort of a sympathetic ground, he didn't have the money to buy that, and I should let him go, right? So these are the soft corners, whatever we make. Ethics doesn't mean that it is only the soft corners, but of course. Those are like code of moral principles where well, those are not written and those are not uh, actually mentioned in somewhere in the books. But those are developed with our value streams. It can be your educational exposure, it can be your professional exposure, it can be your family orientation, it can be your organization orientation too. So these things are affecting over the moral principles we know as the ethics. So basically, ethics are known as the code of moral principles and values that governs the behavior of a person or the group, right? With respect to what is right or wrong, right? And there are three domains of human actions when it comes to the ethics, right? So we say that the domain of the uh, codified law, the domain of ethics, and the domain of the free choice. Now, when it comes to that, we can see the amount of the explicit control of a human behavior with respect of the domain of the codified law. When we are looking at the domain of the codified law, of course, to comply the legal standard or comply the legal requirements or to be firm with the uh, legislative rules and regulations, the people are having a higher control uh, than uh, when it comes to your free choice, right? You can see, as an example, if you are a person who drives vehicles, right? So, uh, let's say whenever you are trying to, uh, you know, uh, whenever you are driving the, your vehicle, you are abide to follow some of the rules and regulations and, you know, uh, it is a must. And you are totally controlled with that rules and regulations which are introduced 
as a set of um, legislative concerns. So you are very careful with that. So you have more con more control over yourself uh, explicitly uh, with a higher degree for the domain of codified law, right? But when it comes to the domain of free choice, let's say, right? So you have your own personal standards. Um, you you haven't expressed it to your family colleagues, or you don't uh, express it to your uh, let's say uh, your social people, right? Uh, let's say the teams, so it can be the social teams that you are like uh, you are you are, you are uh, 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 behaving with. So you have not mentioned to them, but of course internally you are having sort of a personal standards product. As an example, basically your personal policies, right? Some of the people are like let's say. Uh, people even though uh, the family or the even though the, their social status uh, actually not uh, influencing on that but they are having their personal standards of being teetotalers like not getting any uh, you know the, the uh, uh, alcoholic drinks so those are their personal standards right so when it comes to that of course in some circumstances you may have seen with the other factors the people are trying to change their personal standards and the people are up to change their personal standards because why they uh, you know in some social scenarios we see even though there are some teetotalers with the influence of the friends with the influence of their co-colleagues they tend to get some sort of small types of you know the alcoholic drinks so these are the ways of changing the human behavior where you are uh, you know the in, in the domain of free choice or let's say the personal standard right it may vary with the person to person with the you know the the degree of influence of this domain of free choice but when it comes to the middle part let's say the domain of ethics it's in between the codified law and your free choice right so domain of ethics in the sense that is the social standards where the what the social people or let's say what the society thinks which is right or wrong that is your domain of ethics where you are you are having explicit control right so you are you know you know uh, you have to be controlled with some sort of conditions considering your personal standards as well as considering the legislative standards in between this considering the domains of ethics right okay hope you would understand then we have several different criteria for ethical decision making, right? Uh, there are basically there are five uh, ethical uh, like uh, the criteria for ethical decision making. So we'll get to know about one. Utilitarian approach. What do you mean by utilitarian? Now read the presentation itself and we'll try to understand this. Utilitarian approach. Considering over the all the parties and taking the best solution which suits and benefits the majority. Now when it comes to Sri Lanka, See, some of the politicians are making some of the decisions based on the utilitarian approach, right? Seeing that what is best and which is best fit with the, uh, let's say, mass crowd or let's say the majority of the country's citizens, right? Considering all the, uh, let's say, especially on these days with this COVID-19 uh, influence, right? We can see most of the majority of the decisions are being taken considering the majority's, uh, let's say, the social welfare, or that is the betterment of the majority. So that will be considered under the utilitarian approach. We are considering over the all the parties affected and taking the best solution which suits and benefits the majority. Right? Doesn't care uh, for the minority, but they are just getting the majority's part. And just coming to the individualism approach, it's totally opposite than that utilitarian, where individual approach acts are moral when promote the individual's best long-term interests. Now, basically, if you are, you know, uh, coming to the individualism approach, now you as an individual, you decide on uh, something which is the best interest of your own moral, right? Acts are moral when promote the individual's best long-term interests, right? Let's say. Uh, that is basically uh, how an organization or CEO making a decision without considering the others but uh, as per his exposure as per his knowledge right not the betterment of him itself but still uh, you know considering only his it's like centralized decision making right individualism approach okay so then the acts are moral when they promote the 
uh, individual's best long-term interests. Then third one is moral rights approach. What do you mean by moral right? Now, decision should best maintain the basic rights of those who affects. Moral rights. You think about the moral right and, uh, you know, the on the moral right only you make the decision. Uh, saying that, you know, though it is legal or illegal, you make the moral right decision. Right. Considering whether that is going to work or whether that is, uh, that will that be okay with the people, those who have been affected. Right. Let's suppose if you if you if you are trying to help a, a person uh, who doesn't have uh, you know uh, who, who is actually uh, uh, let's say um, a, a nobody right basically so you won't get any benefit of course and also you don't want to like um, the, you know without considering the others uh, aspect you try to help him or her because you feel that. Uh, you know, uh, to you, you try up with you know your moral rights, where uh, you see that uh, uh, you know um, th that that the, you know, whatever the need or whatever the uh, requirement of that particular person, you try to see that he is having you know a, a sort of basic right, right? So to maintain his basic right, you try to help him or her. So that is what you call as moral rights approach. If you do have any concerns, let me know so I can help you out through, right? Um, so that is one way of doing it. And the next one is justice approach. So this is very conventional way, like moral decisions should be based on equity, fairness and impartiality. Now justice approach is basically where you uh, make the decisions or, you know, uh, you know, uh, make the decisions ethically, but of course, again, you um, think about three aspects where equity right the fairness of the decisions as well as you being impartial right now there are three sub ways of uh, doing it that is called distributive procedural and the compensatory where uh, normally uh, what we call like for this approach we call as justice approach since uh, we expect something to be happen uh, ethically by a person that is like we make the justice from the courts of law right so that is what we uh, we mean here right that is why we name this justice approach as like that so in that case we uh, actually for the first thing like uh, distributive not be uh, biased on arbitrary characteristics right not be biased on arbitrary characteristics now individualism you are not going to be individualistic and you are not going to be you know you take some you know rigid actions but you will be distributive right you will concern of the it in a normal way right so that is what you mean and procedural right now whenever you are making the decisions you must also comply the rules and regulations of your organization or let's say your your country it can be your whatever the territory that you live right you must also comply your rules and regulations right and those rules and regulations has to be administered fairly procedurally right and then the compensatory if the party has been affected you must compensate him or her for the cost of the injuries right looking at that particular matter let's say if a person has got like let's say if a person got injured uh, when he was trying to do a task of your organization so you know even though uh, it has been performed uh, in a let's say the, the, the person has performed that activity uh, without considering the safety instructions of the company right so though it is illegal you know but still you are having the ability to help that party by giving a small sort of compensation explaining all these matters you can compensate him and you know do a sort of a justice right because that party has already been affected because he did that on behalf of the company even though he hasn't uh, you know followed the rules and regulations of the company but still he has done something so considering that you can compensate him right so this is justice approach and practical approach when it comes to the practical approach, decisions on the prevailing standards of the professions are larger the society. Like decisions on the prevailing standards, right? You know, comparing all the standards, the procedures, the rules and whatever, you make some sort of practical uh, decisions, right? Ethically, ethically practical decisions, right? So that is what you mean by the practical approach. 
right we'll move further so when it comes to the personal moral development of course you can see there are three stages right the first one is the pre-conventional the second is the conventional level and the third one is the post-conventional level right these are thrived by self-interest social expectations and the internal values i will show you how right if you can remember we discussed about uh, the leadership styles that the people do have right? different people are having different uh, leadership styles as well as if you can remember the management styles or the leadership styles we discussed on like uh, task or work related leadership uh, styles and uh, you know the people oriented leadership styles yeah these things are happening based on the personal moral development of like uh, the people right so when it comes to the pre-conventional level you can see uh, read the depiction follows the rules to avoid the punishment acts in own interests uh, obedience for its own sake right follows rules to avoid the punishments now these are pre-conventional right because uh, in some instances you can see the people are following rules and regulations to avoid or to refrain from getting any punishment or you know unfavorable circumstance unfavorable occurrence so that deals with the self interests right not just because of the others are saying not just because of the your parents are telling right not just because of the social influence nothing right your self interest because since you don't want to get any sort of a punishment you will you know follow the rules and regulations whatever so that is called pre-conventional and conventional level is where you tie up with your social expectations right mostly let's say some people are um, you know do some activities or let's say make some decisions based on you know considering the majority right as an example lives up to expectations of the others right even though you don't want but still you do because the social is like the society is expecting from you that right that is called conventional level so you deal with the social expectations now when it comes to uh, uh, the pre-conventional level we can see the autocratic or cohesive leadership styles right if you can remember autocratic like, like centralized and it's like uh, you know autocratic in the sense uh, authority is centralized and you know the rulers and the decision makers and it's like rigid rulers right and cohesive like people are punishing in some instances uh, 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 people have to do things uh, be because of they are getting the punishments right now refrain from doing that activity will punish them so because of that they have to do it right that is like that and employee uh, behavior is like task oriented right employee behavior is more try to task oriented they are not even caring about their family life they are not even caring about their work life balance where they are not caring about their you know social satisfaction nothing is there but they just focus on the task right so task oriented behavior right okay so coming to the conventional level as we said they are tied up with the social expectations people do whatever things because the society wants them so that is what so the leadership styles encountered like associated with this uh, conventional uh, level is guiding encouraging team oriented right mostly those are driven by the leaders right not the managers so they are very associative leadership styles right and here you can see the employee employee behavior as very work group collaborative now when it comes to even the decision making like the participative decision making everything is comes under the conventional level yeah, you have the social knots between the people right they are better you know um, task oriented uh, uh, than the task oriented people because they have the task as well as they have social ties right and the third ones are post conventional behavior so what do you mean by post conventional right because it thrives with your internal values right it can be your organization it can be your family it can be yourself right fellows self uh, shows us principles um, uh, the chosen principles of justice and right right aware that people hold different values and seek the creative solutions to ethical dilemmas balance concern of individual with concern of common good right so here in this case since they are thriving with their internal values you can see some of the transformational leadership styles right 
or in some cases you can see the servant leadership styles because those are dealing with their internal values right if you are a very good transformer uh, you know you transform things you convert things into you know creativity right so creativity of course uh, affects on that and coming back to the employee behavior those are like empowered behaviors like empowered employees because they have the motivation to do it right because in post conventional case you have your internal values it can be organizational it can be your family background it can be your internal yourself values right self values so that comes with the determination that comes with the commitment that comes with the dedication right so those are like, like thriving forces where your you you have the empowered employees you have the super spirit employees right and the employees are giving the fullest participation now without worrying right they work because they they are internally impressed they are internally encouraged right motivated not that they are getting since they are getting a punishment or some something to, to refrain that punishment they are not working right they are totally like out of that mindset that right? they work originally right so these are the three levels of personal moral development in uh, ethics right okay we'll move further now most of the companies you may have experienced most of the companies are like trying to uh, develop you know the corporate social responsibility they are going to do the social responsibility right you may have seen some of the organizations are involving in uh, developing social capital some of the people are helping others right and taking some of the photographs and publishing on their annual reports that is not social responsibility right corporate social responsibility is where organizations do identify what is going to happen and what are the things that they can do for the society for the well-being of the social or the societal people right corporate social responsibility doesn't mean anything like the promotional material where you can use all these pictures and things in your annual uh, reports and to see you know this much of funds have been uh, you know utilized for these types of uh, csr projects no, no not that right it's merely you know like promoting your organization again but being social responsible is in the sense you make some sort of moral obligations towards the uh, like uh, the community right in this case we define it as the management's obligation to make the choices and takes the actions that will contribute to the welfare and interest of the society now when it comes to the corporate social responsibility it's not merely focused on generating profits through promoting you are not promoting your brand right that will automatically promotes but still you know that will automatically promote your brand but that is not the intention of doing csr csr is something that you identify the need people and you help you identify some of the social welfare that to be constructed or to be uh, built so you help on that right so as an example we can see most of some of the blue chip companies in sri lanka are donating their you know funds and things to the um, whatever the funds or it can be securities or whatever the utilizations for the betterment on uh, you know the development of the infrastructure on this uh, mitigation of covid-19 virus right on these days we can see but those are not the promotional activities we can see some of the figures are being given like millions and billions but of course you know um, that is to make something happen in the societal welfare right that is a moral obligation right the companies do having obligations because why they use the resources from the society they use human capital from society they are existing in the society and they are sustaining because of the society so because of that they are having a moral obligation to do some sort of i mean it's not compulsory to be a, an organization to do their you know social welfare activities and co corporate social responsibility but being social responsible and ethical in the sense they have to do it right there's nothing legally or legislatively properly announced and they have the commitment no but morally they should be having the commitment right but when it comes to stakeholders we say uh, i should have to mention because with these corporate social responsibility is focusing on stakeholders of the organization other than the internal but the external right so stakeholder is any group of or a person within uh, within or outside the organization that has the, some type of investment or interests 
in the organization performances and is affected by the organizational actions. Now, as an example, let's say a tire company is open nearby a river, and after all oh, their you know spoilages or let's say they are, they are whatever the te technical and you know the chemical uh, uh, garbage are thrown to the rivers. So the people, those who are consuming the water from that river, are the affected party of that particular act, right? Under that, we can say mostly the company is having the commitment to do some sort of a social well-being development programs to them as to you know uh, you know by identifying that where they can either um, you know uh, make some sort of uh, proper garbage throwing facilities or infrastructure as well as they can provide some of uh, you know some of uh, uh, financial or let's say some of uh, societal well-being activities uh, or let's say some of some of the strategies where to develop their social well-being uh, to the people affected right i'm not telling that people have to you know the companies have to do something in wrong and you know to correct them that is not again social responsibility right you can understand what i said right okay now coming back to the social responsibility matrix we, we call this one as the total corporate so, uh, social responsible hierarchy where this is how the organizations are developing over the period as to uh, do the social responsibility let's say right so in first phase you can see merely the organizations are uh, having you know the intention of making profits right so they do economic responsibility here through what now here in this case they uh, you know buy some of the raw materials from the outer world and as well as they are giving some employment opportunities to the people and they make the salaries as well as the remuneration to the people and also they pay the taxes to the government so this is where they make the economic social responsibility or let's say the economic responsibility of the company right in the second place they are having the legal responsibility where they have to they must obey the laws and the bylaws the bylaws are the laws which are uh, imposed by the uh, let's say uh, the local statutory bodies when it comes to the uh, let's say um, uh, the uh, munis uh, municipal council right so uh, those are bylaws now when it comes to the organizations they must always uh, obey the rules and regulations which are imposed by the statutory bodies so that is their legal responsibility right and also then now the organization is getting matured they are having another responsibility called ethical responsibility they are they are uh, here 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 is what we are talking about right ethical responsibility now you being ethical you do whatever is correct whatever known as right and you try to mitigate or to avoid the harm right so that is your ethical responsibility and the last or the top part is the discretionary responsibility where the companies are in like at their maturity they try to contribute something to their social responsibility like to to the betterment of the others or the society or the citizens that is called discretionary responsibility but this is optional of course some of the companies are even in their maturity stage but still they are not in a position to you know uh, make some sort of uh, social capital or to um, you know grant some funds to do them right so these are like discretionary responsibility right at the topmost right then coming to the organizational which are ethical right organizations which are ethical so in developing ethical organization we need three arms basically we call them as the uh, branches of an ethical organization so what are the branches now if you are trying to if you, if you let's suppose you are a ceo of a company and you need to develop your organization as an ethical and social responsible organization to do that you need three things first even though your organizational um, uh, let's say the structure or let's say your organizational um, your board of directors your owners or your organizational uh, culture is ethical if you don't have the ethical individuals you cannot sustain it right so in any case you must recruit uh, you must uh, you know the recruit the correct people with the uh, ethical standards where we can call them as the ethical individuals right and you must maintain an ethical leadership if you do frauds to the society if you make any misrepresentations to the society so you cannot expect your organizational employees to be um, ethical 
in their whatever the ways right those are very harmful because when it comes to the not ethical employees they will harm to the society and also they can affect all your organization to harm your organization as well right because they are the internal stakeholders of this company right they will make employee theft they will make uh, damages to the organizational properties and things like that as well as they will make some rumors misnomers right all these things will be affected the organization in a very spoiled way so your organization culture will be spoiled right so to refrain that condition you must understand the importance of ethical leadership where you have to give the ethical leadership to your co colleagues and the organizational structures and the systems because even the structural systems let's say if your organizational communication is not proper proper sorry your organizational uh, codes of conduct is not good your corporate you don't have any corporate culture in your organization so ultimately you will be at a mess because mostly whenever you try to develop your organization into a spect of ethical organization you must need the organizational structures and systems to be ethical right so move into the code of ethics i should have to you know i i, I took this because i i wanted to you know elaborate on this because this is the code of ethics is the core of your organization right even though you have procedures even though you have uh, mechanisms to govern the organization but without code of ethics you cannot govern the reason is the code of ethics are known as the formal statements of company's value concerning the ethics and social issues now if you try to base now these are the ways of developing them like the principles and the policies as i told you the policies and the the the, the procedures of your organization are very you know one way of uh, you know developing your code of ethics and your principles now as an example let's say even though you don't have the enough revenue to run your business in a given a month let's say in a given month you are not trying to um you know make some sort of harmful effect effects to the others and you know uh, get the what do you call uh, let's say um unclear or let's say that is not unclear sorry uh, it should be like uh, um only uh, like uh, unlawful or illegal profits you are not going to make any profits you don't uh, like your organization should not be a mafia boss right your organization should always be ethical right so that is what you call as principle based in a case right as an example we know some of the people are there now as a policy as a principle they maintain even though i don't have enough money to survive myself for a month i'm not going to get any sort of loans those are policies principle is that even though i don't have any money but still i'm not going to steal from somebody so that is a principle right that is a your moral principle so like that you must be having some sort of principles as well as a policies to govern your organization where you must have a proper code of ethics or let's say the formal statements of your company's value stream uh to govern your organization right and also ethical structures there are various systems and positions and programs that the company can undertake to encourage and support the ethical behavior right it can be training programs it can be various systems it can be the communication systems it can be the hierarchies it can be the ways that you command and you know govern the people right and also there are some positions specifically um, um you know introduced by the especially the areas of human resources management right to govern so that is why you need erir people right industry related relations and uh, um, employee relations officers to govern them because you know that is your thriving force anyway your hr will be the thriving force of your organization right so maintaining ethical structures is very much important in developing ethical businesses right uh so these are the things that i wanted to discuss you today so thank you very much for being online for the session thank you